What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman of The Time Teller and today we're talking Longines. Now, I don't want to say this is a what happened to episode. You know, we've done what happened to Waltham. We've done uh, what happened to Elgin. We've even done what happened to Wittenauer. And we're actually going to harp on that a little bit today because as you know, Longines acquired Wittenauer way back when. And I think vintage Longines, vintage Wittenauer, those are like my favorite watches to collect when we're talking about vintage watch collecting you know they were producing these watches that were kind of art deco a bit asymmetrical while still being really really tasteful not too out there but out there enough to be not boring um, they're really well made you know bomb proof movements they're super duper old but they're still true uh, I just absolutely love them incredible watches from vintage Longines and vintage Wittenauer however something happened after that point it's like Longines just kind of disappeared they just kind of did something something really cool and then they just pieced out. And it's a bummer because a lot of the watches after that point were just kind of crummy. But today I bear good news because it seems like in very recent history, Longines is making moves to come back. So you know what, we can actually just kind of wrap the episode up like right here because uh, I think the title of this episode is, is Longines coming back? YouTuber thumbnail. And the answer is just yes. Longines is coming back. But all jokes aside, we're actually going to take a look at a few Longines releases that have come out pretty much in the last five years uh, that I think are just incredible. And again, this is proof that Longines is not, they're not willing to go down without a fight. They're not trying to just fade away. They're not trying to Thanos themselves. They're making moves, baby. It is 4.45 p.m. Let's get down to business. <laughs> First up, the Longines Pulsometer Chronograph, and this is a mono pusher. This actually does have a lacquer dial. I know, when you first look at this watch, I've shown this watch to some people and they're like, oh, it's a bit busy. But the more you look at it, you realize it's incredibly elegant. So tastefully done. It's very clean. We're not we're not looking at like a Breitling Navitimer here. We're not looking at even like a Citizen Nighthawk. This is still very clean, clear, under control, Neutrogena baby. And it's actually like super duper symmetrical. I love this. And I think it's really nice because it's a physician's chronograph. Now I'm not a physician. Uh, my dad happens to be one. I think that he should get this watch so that I can steal it from him. Now it's said that this specific mono pusher is inspired by one of the Longines 1920s chronographs. Um, and you can definitely see that all the way down to like the stylized Longines signage. And uh, of course it is a dual register chronograph. It says, Grad pour 30 pulsations. Roast me in the comment section for, for that. Because I think the translation is that it's graduated for 30 pulsations. Grad you pour. 30 pulsations. I sound like, uh, I don't know who I sound like. It was like, Jar Jar Binks. God, 30 pulsations, Anna. <laughs> it's over, Anna. Miss, I have a high ground. Oh, this episode's a train wreck. You know what, Gato? Just leave that in the episode, because screw it. But all jokes aside, I really do love the contrast on the style. Again, very clean white lacquer. You get the black indexes and then you get all the pulsation markings uh, in red. And then, I mean, who doesn't love a clean white dial with blue hands? Absolutely gorgeous. I've always wanted a single push chronograph and um, yeah, it's between like this and maybe that uh, mono push Mont Blanc, but uh, the Mont Blanc is like a whole lot more expensive than this, so yeah. Dad, if you're watching my channel, which I know you don't because you wish that I had like a real profession, um, maybe buy this and then I'll steal it from you. Oh my God, it's like I can't get through a single watch without doing a bit. <sighs> I'm, I'm so sorry guys. 40 millimeter case diameter, so right within that sweet spot. Powered by the ETA A08L11 caliber. Uh, this does have a sapphire crystal. Obviously not precious metal within this price point. It is a stainless steel case, although I would love white gold. You are getting a six o'clock date window, perfectly symmetrical, nice and true. And I've seen these go for around 35 to four grand online. Um, and yeah, I, I absolutely 
absolutely recommend this to anyone looking for kind of a vintage heritage inspired single push chronograph. I know that's kind of a specific thing, um, but man, I love it. And since we're talking about kind of heritage chronographs, let's go to a very recent release from Longines. The Longines Heritage Classic Chronograph coined the Tuxedo. Now, if that Longines mono pusher, that pulsimeter, wasn't vintage enough, this Heritage Classic is like incredibly old school looking, like even more than that mono pusher. Uh, this is crazy. All the markers, like, like I'm serious, all the chaptering markers, all the indexes, the center dial, even the handset, even the Longines font, it looks like it's old. And while that mono pusher was based on a 1920s chronograph, this is based off a 1940s chronograph, but this actually looks like an older watch. So it's funny, they really did their, they took their time and uh, yeah, they made it look super duper old school. You know what? I kind of like the look of this more than I like uh, that AP Remaster 01. Of course, the remaster from AP, uh, also a vintage inspired chronograph that costs much, much more than this Longines tuxedo, but I actually like the way this one looks even more. Speaking of price, this tuxedo is coming in right around three grand. You're getting a matte kind of off-white color. You're getting a matte black center dial. Uh, you are getting a blue chronograph hand and both register hands uh, are also blue. And then all the markings around the chapter ring also in that kind of, not quite navy blue, it's a little bit more vibrant than that. Again, guys, I, I always have to apologize. I'm really bad with colors, uh, and it doesn't help that I'm slightly colorblind when it comes to like blues and blacks. Now, this chronograph is also a 40 millimeter case diameter. But guys, if you're looking for a super duper thin watch, this is probably not the choice for you. It's coming in over 13 millimeters thick. I believe it's 13.6 millimeters thick, which isn't enormous, but you know, it's substantial on the wrist. Now, powering this Longines is actually a modified ETA. I believe it's an upgraded ETA 2892, and Longines calls it the L895 caliber. But again, it's, it's just an upgraded ETA. No issue with that, just letting you know. 54 hour power reserve, and all in all, just incredible styling. So I'm a big fan of Longines Heritage Collection, and there's actually a few more we're gonna talk about right now. The Longines Heritage 1945. Now, this is a watch that when I saw it in that kind of, uh, I'll say salmon dial, it's not the most pink in person, but uh, gorgeous dial, very simple, some slight kind of grainage texturing. I'm not going to say it's like a linen dial. It's just an amazing, an amazing layout. It's simple. It looks old. Uh, everything is sharp. Polished case. I've gotten to wear these a few times because I have a buddy that actually owns this exact watch. Very small sub dial. So we're talking small seconds. This is like small, small seconds. And it's actually pushed right next to that spindle. Um, so if you don't like that layout, not the watch for you. Big blued handset. Um, just Incredible watch. Again, the Longines font, incredibly old school. Uh, nothing applied except for some of the indexes. Uh, they are raised a bit off the dial. And all in all, the only thing I think they could have done better with this watch is to give it a display case back. But, you know, display case backs were not common. That's actually kind of a fairly recent thing. So in the 1940s, this watch would not have a display case back. I just think it'd be fun if it did. This is a 12 millimeter thick automatic. Uh, again, 40 millimeter case diameter. That's kind of a theme here. And you're getting a sapphire crystal. So one thing I absolutely love about Longines Heritage Collection is that they do stick true. They stay true, I should say, to their older models that they're kind of pulling inspiration from, but they're giving it uh, kind of upgraded parts. So if you do want a vintage watch, but you want the confidence of a modern build, uh, then Longines Heritage Collection, you know, I think it's top notch. Moving on to a watch that has a very common design, but I think, you know, Longines does a very good job with it. I can see Amido Baroncelli in this watch. I could see, um, you know, a cocktail time in this watch. It's not something that stands out to me as like super duper unique. Like some of the other watches on the list were a bit more unique than this, but I'm talking about Longines Heritage Flagship, or I believe it's the Flagship Heritage, excuse me. I know that you can buy it new 
for just under 1700 I believe it's 1675 but it is a really nice watch with a really sharp handset and that off-white dial, that cream dial, that's like the first thing I happen to notice. So whereas the other watch did not have too many, you know, it didn't have a ton of dynamic on the dial as far as applied indexes and like sharp handset and stuff like that, this is like, this is absolutely dynamic in a multitude of ways. Really sharp handset, uh, applied indexes, applied Longines Wings logo, and then uh, one thing that stands out to me is that this has small seconds, but it doesn't have a dial border. So it's another really old school look of where it just has the small second hand uh, rotating on its own spindle without any dial. And of course, it does have a six o'clock date window. Uh, this is just under 40 mil millimeters within that 40 millimeter sweet spot 38.5 millimeters so if you don't feel comfortable wearing a 40 millimeter case uh, this could be an awesome choice for you you're getting a sapphire crystal and it's one of the thinnest watches on the list today excuse me uh, coming in at 10.3 millimeters thick so very very nice uh, this flagship heritage um, I'm a big fan of this I'm sorry, I cut myself off because I, I just took a look at this case back and this actually has a two-tone case back with an inked ship, a flagship, uh, on the case back and uh, yeah. Beautiful, be beautiful detail front and rear, but this is actually hearkening back to one of their 1930s watches. So we have so far a watch that harkens back to the 1920s, a watch that harkens back to the 1930s, a watch that harkens back to the 1940s. Man, very cool. And finally, one of my favorite watches on today's list. So. This really solidified my opinion of Longines Heritage Collection, and this release was what really solidified me putting my foot down and, 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 and definitively saying that Longines has one of the best heritage uh, collections out of any watchmaker, and it's the Military Marine Nationale. This looks a whole lot like an old Longines one of my channel members, Bryce, sent me. Now, I'm gonna do a video series sending that watch to TikTok watch repairs and having them breathe new life into that watch because the crown is stuck, I can't get the handset to move. So, you know, it's probably going to be a series of episodes getting that in working order, but it's crazy. Bryce sent me that watch as a gift. He was like, hey, I'd love to see you getting this back to work. And then Longine, like coincidentally, released media images of this Marine Nationale. And I was like, that's insane coincidence, serendipity, whatever you wanna call it. Maybe Bryce works for Longines and just didn't tell me, that'd be wild. But you can find this for $2,000. And what's interesting is, this kinda goes back to what I was just saying, is that you can either find an old Longines, uh, like the one Bryce sent me, and you know, it's probably gonna have some issues. You're gonna have to, at the very minimum, get it serviced with the one that I have now. It's gonna require like a complete overhaul. Or you can spend two grand on a watch that's perfectly clean, no issues, probably has a warranty from Longines, uh, right out the box, you know, sapphire crystal. It's going to have modern build quality with vintage aesthetic and styling. I just absolutely love that. And Longines just knocks it out of the park with their heritage watches. So this is another sub 40 millimeter case, 38.5. You are getting a stainless steel case with a sapphire crystal. I wish with this watch they gave it a 100 meter water resistance rating. They didn't, only 30 meter water resistance rating, but for the Marine Nationale, I'd love to see it, uh, you know, be, be a little bit more rugged, but this is like modeled after a super duper old watch. So I, I can't really knock them for that. But you know what, even though this isn't like the most rugged field watch in the world, um, I think you could wear this on the supplied leather strap. I think you could wear this on like a textile strap. I think you could even wear it on a NATO strap or maybe even like a beads of rice or something with a straight end link. And I think it would look really super duper cool. So yeah, that, again, Longines crushing it. They're making a comeback. I know I've kind of only taken a look at their heritage collection, but What's another Longines you would like to actually have me take a look at and review, like unbox and review? Uh, I'm not talking vintage, maybe one of these Heritage watches, uh, maybe one of their watches outside of the Heritage collection. Um, leave me a comment and let me know. Now I get a whole lot of questions 
about a Longines that is absolutely not attached to the Heritage Collection at all, and it's their Hydro Conquest. Now, the one that stands out to me is their recent release of the Ceramic Green. That's right, so this is not like a Hulk Green. It's not even like a Kermit Green. It's more like an Olive Drab Green, and oh man. This is like right up my alley because many of you know, I, I kind of like more of those muted tones. Instead of red, I, I tend to like, you know, burgundy instead of just straight green. I like olive drab instead of like bright blue. I like navy. So it, it, it's, yeah, I, I just really, really love olive drab. And I think this new ceramic Hydro Conquest, um, you can find it online for like around 1200 bucks. Ceramic bezel, stainless steel case. You are getting a date complication. I think the only thing I don't like about this release is that it's only ever shown on a rubber diving strap and I tend to, to not really wear my watches on those so I would probably put it on something else like a sailcloth or something. Uh, well actually, hold on, uh, you can find it on a bracelet. It's just for some reason all their media photos that I can that I, I ever see, it's, it's only ever on a rubber diving strap. But you can definitely buy it on a bracelet. I do like how the it, the uh, numerals are huge at the 12, 9, and 6. Some people are not going to like that because it's not symmetrical with the date window obscuring the 3. Um, but yeah, this is a modern Longines that is not within their heritage collection that I think is also something that, are abs that I would absolutely recommend, excuse me. Uh, I was not a huge fan of the Hydro Conquest uh, until this new green ceramic came out and then that kind of totally flipped my opinion on it. Uh, I would go as far as to say between a, and this is a big claim, between the Certina Pro Diver, or oh my gosh, I almost said Pro Diver, <laughs> oh my God. Certina Action Diver, the Certina DS Action Diver. Whoa, Freudian slip maybe? I don't know, I don't know. Between the Certina DS Action Diver, even the Powermatic 80, and this Hydro Conquest Ceramic Green, I would choose this Ceramic Green. It's just, it looks that good in my opinion. So yeah, but but leave me that comment. Which watch would you like me to actually unbox and review from Longines? And we can go ahead and try to make it happen. So guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me on this little list. Uh, I really do. I don't know if I'm gonna call it a rant or a list today. I, I'm, I'm, it's both. I'm gonna rant, or I did rant, about how I think Longines is, is, is making some effort here, and I think we should all give them a bit more credit. So good job, Longines. I think you're doing great. You're, you're doing great, honey. Uh, just keep it up, and um, yeah, I'd love to see what else you guys come up with. Um, but yeah, guys, can't film every day here without the support of my regular viewers and my new viewers and my channel members. So whoever's here watching, I wanna thank you so much because again, you make it possible for me to hang out in this office and yell at the camera uh, just about watches. So. Thank you guys. And if you do wanna join the channel memberships, uh, it's like YouTube's Patreon, it's $4.99 a month. You get some extra content and you get access to that members only Discord chat. Uh, click the join button next to the subscribe button and you can join the ranks of the T3 army. Another great way to support the channel are all the affiliate links in the description below. You can check out my personal website, www.thetimetellershop.com, where there is almost assuredly uh, a Longines made watch there because I always try to find these vintage Longines, uh, whether it be a Longines high frequency or like, you know, obviously a vintage Longines made Wittenauer. We tend to have at least one every restock. So uh, yeah, check out my website and uh, maybe you'll find something cool over there. All right, guys, stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman at The Time Teller. And always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah.